Howdy, folks. Welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show Daily Update Division uh, Edition. And today is a special edition. We're going to have Bo Pomey. But before we do that, Brent, you got to tell us about the market. And we're brought to you by Carnival. And brought to you by Carnival. Cars and crypto, what's not to love? All right, let's go ahead and go to the markets real quick, and I'll run this down so we can get to Bo. All right, we're off 1356. You know, during the weekend, I was watching it. It was running in the 33 to or so. And like I said, I'm still not looking for a huge crash. It'll be interesting to see if Bo coincides with that. But we're down right below 4% right now. Same thing in the overall crypto market. That puts us at a million, uh, excuse me, 1.33 trillion. Oddly enough, the Dow is up uh, 0.36%. Uh, S&P is up 0.35%. NDX is up 0.35%. That alone is a conspiracy theory right there. <laughs> um, and then you look at the Russell 2000, which I brought in here lately, and notice it's only up 0.08%. Gold is off 234, but it's at 1805. Uh, silver is up eight cents. That puts it up 0.31 percent. Uh, crude is off 52 cents. That's at 74.23. Uh, Bitcoin futures: the December 21s are 675 to the negative. The 22s are 675 to the negative. With the overall Bitcoin being 1362. So we've made up about 700 dollars in uh, time value loss there. For the overall cryptos, Ethereum's off 113. Cardano's off four cents, off a buck three on Link. Polkadot's down 89 cents. XRP's down a penny. Litecoin's down a buck 45. XLM's down a smidge. Uh, Theta is down 41 cents. That's a uh, 6% on Theta. A hex is down 2.5%. Uh, that's uh, two one thousandths. And 13 ten thousandths, Carnomaly. Uh, has that down 5% at uh, 2.34 cents. Dogecoin's at 20 cents, and don't you wish you bought it at 60. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Bo Polney, how are you doing, my friend? Long time, it's been too long. You know, it's summer. Um, there's no, not a whole lot going on in the markets, as you saw, you know, Brent, you just went through all that, and, you know, everything's basically just stuck. Uh, and that's what's going on. There's, there's, it's... We're about to. See, we're at a critical and a really important time in our world. Um, all hex expected to break loose here very soon. But you know, it's been really boring. You know, even even today, still the markets are, are pretty boring. Um, so you know, I, I agree with you. It's just you know, when you look, what I'm looking at in the markets is just not a whole lot of excitement. But that's the thing is, you know, but biblically, uh, the the one critical thing I want to talk about would be the U.S. dollar in the 50-year jubilee cycle, right? So the dollar is in a, you know, from what I've talked about in this presentation with you in the past and with other interviews, the, the key thing is the United States dollar with Nixon was taken off the gold standard in 71. And so that would have been 49 years finished last August. So this year that began in September, and this is a, a Hebrew or God's year, starts in September. So September to September, September 2020 to the start of September 2021, that's this year, is the 50th year. And anybody who studies Leviticus 25, 9, uh, you know, 10, talks specifically about the year of Jubilee, and it's it comes down to you know as i'm seeing this it's going to be a moment in time where god does something to take down the dollar and so that's you know as much as you know we've seen the stock market crash and analysts you know even myself have looked at a sample of times the markets are supposed to crash the, the meaning stock market see look what happened in march of last year guys you know they the, the more stock market crash what do they do you know, that little nice little machine that you guys yeah. <laughs> had on your desk for the past few weeks, you know, right. They just print money. So if the stock market crashes 30 percent, in this case, March of last year's crashed 38 percent. And then they print several trillion dollars. Well, what's that going to do back to the market? It's going to push it right back up again. See, so the dollar itself is can be it's it's a it's a it's a dead instrument that at this point is just being traded and so whenever you create it wherever you stick it that's what you fix if you look at the world from a monetary financial standpoint biblically it talks about in revelation the third seal 
The third seal discusses specifically one specific item, and it's called scales, the financial scales. And so the dollar itself is the financial instrument that's going to be tipped. And so that would equate to, you know, David and Goliath, right? When the Goliath fell, everything changed. So until the dollar drops, I don't care what the stock market does, the bond market, it really doesn't matter. But if the dollar took a 20 or 25% haircut, okay, if God intervened, the dollar took a 25% haircut, then the stock market is now worth 25% less. The bonds are worth 25% less. The real estate market's worth 25% less. So everything automatically become because you have to sell it into the dollar, which now is worth 25% less. So that's the key. And then the, the wild part of this is, you know, Brent, with traders, right? It's not 25%. There's a word called leverage. Yeah. Okay. 25% may be wiping you out. <laughs> Correct. Well, that's like this last Bitcoin drop, right? It, it dropped, say, 50 from... You know, 65 down to 30. So it's a 50% correction, right? But I was reading that wiped out over 800,000 traders. Do you realize that? Yep. It wiped out 800,000 traders who are trading cryptos. Okay. Yep. And, and how does that happen? Because of greed, right? So, and how do they get these? How do they get Bitcoin, right? You can't make more of them, right? You can, you can be mining them, but that's slow. Right. So what's the fastest way to accumulate Bitcoin for the ones that want to, you know, grab it? They basically come together, you know, news media stations and throw Elon Musk in the equation. Next thing you know, boom, you have news media and they all pile in at the same time. And all of a sudden, boom, you have this plunge in, 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 in Bitcoin. Right. And so it's coordinated. The coordination allows them to they wiped out 800,000 traders. And then guess who accumulated all the crypto, all the Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies on the drop, right? So that's why in a bull market, as much as they can hammer it and try to bring it down, bull markets have one specific thing in them. Brent, higher Hi. lows, right? So, so we went up to $65,000. Okay, so it dropped to 30, you know, high 20s. That's still a higher low because it broke out of 10,000. Right. So we're in a bull market. And all that was was an accumulation phase for the people who want to basically scare people out of the market or, or wipe them out of the market. That's all that's happened so far. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really crazy what's going on. And you know, the easiest time to do it is going into summer because there's less people watching the markets. And, you know, look what they did. You know, it's interesting, Bo, I had on I think I've had on my fence post segment and on and on this, you know, of course, you're familiar with the Elliott wave theory of three waves up and two waves down in a cycle. And of course, everybody's trying to debate whether we're between the second wave or if we've actually had the third wave and it's all over. And I pointed out to them and looking at charts, we may just be in the first wave that, you know, that, that the concept of, oh, we have to be in the second or the third because we've had a sell down, uh, as you well note, and especially in, in cryptocurrencies, a 50% retraction is really a healthy and normal contraction. It's pretty much the same thing in the stock market. So it's not like it's been overdone by any stretch of the imagination. I could just pull up uh, in the presentation, I've got actually a Bitcoin chart from last week. Go to page 24 and just have a look at that. Okay, there it is. Okay, so, so there's Bitcoin, right? So in any market, whether it's Bitcoin, stock markets, gold and silver, there's what's called a blow off top. It's it's an explosion, okay? So we had Bitcoin move up. Do you see a spike, vertical spike there? I see I see three highs. It went ran up, made, it made a triple top, pulled back fifty percent. Okay, that's not a go. Look at the charts historically from in 27, 2018, I think it was twenty seventeen when Bitcoin spiked vertical when it hit twenty thousand. See that was epic. But it was a very dramatic, sharp move. Okay, so if you want to correlate that move of twenty thousand and twenty uh, twenty seventeen, that type of a spike top would be Bitcoin at, at over or anywhere near or over two hundred thousand. Yeah, 
Okay, so so what we're what we've only seen is um, you know a, a mass amount of you know people got, you know you know trying to accumulate, and so they scare the heck out of the market. That's all that's happened. They did it in you know in, in less volatile time. You know when there's less people trading, so they can do it in you know May June, uh, and the next thing you know it, it's going to shoot back up. Um, and then we're just going to have what's called the next leg up. Okay. So like you said, it's, you know, it's, it, so what we had is one, two, and then it's going to shoot back up and vertical, vertical into three. So we're nowhere near um, uh, some kind of a cycle top, or we haven't topped in Bitcoin because that wasn't a blow off top. And so now we're basically have accumulation. Following accumulation, we're going to have a, a num- the next move is going to be fun. Okay. So as exciting as that move was from 10,000 to 60,000, the next move is going to be really exciting because it's we're heading into 200s. Yeah, interesting. You know, Bo, what, what, something I find interesting and me not being, a, you know, an accredited guy, I'm just kind of a layman that watches this. He stuff, trains but, horses. Yeah, yeah, I'm a horse trainer. <laughs> but, but let me tell you, it's almost like we have Bernie Madoff in the White House and not the <laughs> fool that's in there because through manipulation and the printing of that money that they're doing, the stock market keeps running up based on nothing. There, you know, timelines and through this manipulation, things are getting moved around because the Ponzi scheme that is uh, since the 70s is the world's reserve currency, U.S. dollar. And they just they're printing money like it's going out of style. It's crazy. So, and it is. Yeah. Well, so so Drew, what gives the dollar value? Right. It's, it's so we know with Nixon, they detached it from gold. Okay, so we know that that's that's, right. that's public knowledge. Okay, so what gives the U.S. dollar value? It's a full faith and confidence in the United yeah. States. Okay, so full faith and confidence gives the U.S. dollar value. Now, let me ask you a question. So you just saw what happened. You know what's going on in Washington, right? Without getting too specific, people know what happened. Okay, not everybody, because a lot of people don't want to don't want to believe the truth. Okay. Uh, with what happened, when that truth gets revealed, there's your triggering event for a loss of full faith and confidence. Are you with me? Sure. And so when that event goes down, and so the cycle says we're going to see that event before the, before the end of August, because September begins the 51st year. Are you with me? So something's going to, you know, the back, we have American flag, you know, we've, we're, the, the, the dollar itself uh, is the instrument that, that must biblically be, re, you know, the, the rebalancing of the financial scales. That's a triggering event that we've all been waiting for. And so people say, well, how does Bitcoin get to $200,000? Well, how about a loss of faith and confidence in the dollar? Okay. And could that happen? All I can tell you is we are in a year of Jubilee. My math calculations, even in my presentation, you know, that we can chat about today briefly. But the point is, is that, you know, we, we passed the 444 day mark. So triple fours that ended on Friday of last this past week. And so now we are at a time point where things are supposed to go haywire for our world. Uh, and in those events are going to cause extraordinary moves um, for pre- for cryptocurrencies. There, you know, that's that's what's going to happen to them. Uh, and also, precious metals are going to start to um, go crazy. The precious metals they're going to fight like tooth and nail to not let them go up because they've done that for generations already. But you know, as this key critical moment goes down. That's going to be like the nail in the coffin for control of precious metals. And then they're just going to, like right now we talked about earlier, higher lows. They're going to try to keep slamming it down, but they're not going to be able to bring it down as low it is as it is right now. And shortly thereafter, by next year, they lose control. And we're going to see, you know, extraordinary prices uh, on the precious metals. So it's just cryptocurrencies have front run this entire thing. Yeah, very interesting. Well, and you know, the interesting thing is with AOC and, and all the overeducated people up there all subscribing to the modern monetary theory of if the government creates the money, uh, by definition, we got the same value out of the economy or out of whatever we spend it on, whether it was a cylindra that went out of business or whether it's a, a crate of cash going to Iran or whatever. In their mind, 
that equates the two. But what's interesting, Bo, and what I think is makes it so treacherous in, in prognostication of a lot of this stuff is, is the entire world's doing it. Everybody is on fractional banking. Everybody has a fiat currency and everybody is printing their own currency. No, I mean, and you're right. That's exactly, that is the case. Just the, the the top of the food chain for all the paper money is the US dollar, right? Oh, yeah. So when, when that one falls, the game is over. Oh yeah, it's or, all over. Or, or, like or you cigars. find, not the game is over because the dollar is not gonna go to zero overnight, okay? But what's gonna happen when the dollar loses that status, right? Then you come to find out that the king has no clothes. You know, you know that, that saying, right? You come to realize the truth and then everybody's gonna start, you know, panicking. And they're gonna and the, and we're gonna see a mass rush for precious metals and cryptocurrencies because precious metals, you know, they're God's money. They come out of the ground. They are get put on this earth, or you know, they're created by God as a value means of exchange that cannot be created out of thin air. The people that run the world did the opposite. They suppressed the price of precious metals and created their own money. It's not, this, you know, it says in God we trust on the dollar bill, okay? Um, that's not my God. <laughs> that's all print, and that's printed on their money, okay? It's in right. their God they trust. That's printed on their money, and that's what it is. And so all these monies, you're right. They're, they all do the same thing. They can all be created. It's just that the U.S. dollar has the longest, so far, had the longest staying power. But we're at a point now where, biblically, we're at the third seal. Right. And so it's, it's so things are about to tip by the hand of God. And, and it'll, it'll take everything down with it. It's globally. You know, uh, China and Russia a few weeks ago decided to, to disconnect from the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. And of course, that hasn't really happened. They've been talking about it for years. But we're starting to see other people. El Salvador goes to Bitcoin as their official currency. Well, you know, and, and I'll, I'll agree with you in what you're saying. But here's the thing, right? If anyone could have done something about it, it would have been done by now. You understand? So this is what we're doing. We're, we're taking on a fallen angel. Mm -hmm. As crazy as that is, that's the truth. That's why we can't stop what's in motion. When I say we, we is we can pray on it. We have free will to choose what we want to believe in, you know, or, or which direction we want to personally go in. But as a collective, right, um, evil was led onto this earth, and now we're basically seeing what's going on. We're, we're seeing this, these, you know, how do they control humanity with paper money? And that's what's going on. So the way this can only stop is when God steps in. The event that's coming, as clear as I can state this, it's not about the stock market, okay? The event that's coming is going to be a financial event. And if God's involved, which is going to be involved, this is written in the Bible over 2,000 years ago, this will be a rebalancing of the financial system. So this will be the, what's coming is the greatest financial event in human history. We're living in this time where it's going to happen. And then it's going to cause mass chaos and all kinds of, you know, uh, but ultimately is going to be tied in back with, because the new era is what's about to be exposed and we're going to see it. And the new era is not going to be an era of the same money, right? The new era has to have a new financial currency. Uh, it has to have a new government. It has to have a new everything, a new political system, right? So that's what's coming. It's a new era in time. Those are not my words. Those are the words of the prophets, and those are words given to me by God in terms of what we're about to experience, a new financial realm, a new financial era. And that era involves anything you can think about becomes new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Interesting. No, so, it, it, so as much as much as these people, you know, in, in other countries are trying to bring on Bitcoin as a means of currency, all of it, you know, in, in a heartbeat, they can go over there and, and they can do what they've what they've done with uh, Iraq and all these other countries that try to go off the gold, off the dollar standard. You see, because ultimately, who has ultimate control? The one that runs the world. 
So we need God to intervene here. We, we world needs to pray, uh, and we need to pray for God's intervention because that's the only way this will stop. Because if it, if it, if man could have done this, come on, this would have happened generations ago, years ago. You know, we're still sitting in the same place. You know, and think about you know what's happened. They've they've manipulated the price of silver. I look at the charge for fifty years, and it's still you know can break through fifty bucks. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just constant manipulation to keep God's people. And how do you keep God's people suppressed? You know, you basically create a bunch of money. You you you, you, you the ones the ones that run this world they're loaded. And they can buy and sell whatever they want, uh, and including you know what just happened in Washington and everything else. You know, the, just that dollar instrument allows them to do whatever they want. You, you bet. You know, Bo, and I think it's uh, I think it's slide seven in this. You have some very interesting biblical timelines. We've talked about biblically, you know, where we are in relation to the, to the cycles. Um, it, it all basically would start and started. Uh, this current cycle that we're in, it's a, these are Daniel timelines. None of these are made up. You can go into the Bible. You can pull it out. At the, day, the dates are very precise timelines. All I did was I lined up the timelines to current events. Look at how this patterns out because this is beyond wild that it actually happens this way. So you've got Trump wins the election November 8th of 2016. So you have a Daniel cycle of, of three and a half years, which is 1,260 days precisely. Not almost, but precisely. So on that precise date, you know, we've all saw that oil went to zero or negative 38. So that was the first cycle of, the, of Daniel. Now, the Daniel cycle has another 1260 cycle plus another 30 plus 45 days. So that'll take the, you know, the initial Trump cycle all the way into the end of 2023. So as much as what's going on in the world, person with the name of T right there, number 45, you know, he's not in office right now, but we're in his cycle right now. And so the, the amazing part of this whole thing is, so from oil going to zero, that equated to what we talked about in prior presentations of the Noah cycle, Noah's Ark, okay? So it's not that we're doing Noah's Ark, we are doing the timeline of Noah's Ark. And as incredible as this is, if that cycle was valid, the dates should have landed on key dates. Well, they, every single Noah date landed on a feast date, on a, pa, on, on a critical biblical important date. So from that time point, you know, we go 40, we got uh, 40 days forward. So, you know, 40 days and 40 nights, right? Sure. Well, that just happens to land on Pentecost of last year. Crazy, but it did. Then the water kept rising till 150 days, then it finally topped out at 150 days. And that lands right on Rosh Hashanah of last year. This is crazy how that's happening. And then Noah steps off the ark 370 days from when the start was. So that equated to when we, we've talked numerous times before on our presentations of April 26, 21 being a really incredibly important Point for the world, and that was second Passover, but more importantly, based on the Enoch calendar, that was a real Passover. So you know, if you study the Enoch calendar, that was a real Passover. So point being is, so now Noah steps off the ark, but still we're sitting here watching, nothing's changed yet. Nothing's changed, you know, so why? Israel did not get out of Egypt until 400 years. So 400 days, so you go another 30 days forward from when Noah steps off the ark in May, April 26, 30 days, which is 400 precise days. So 400 years, 400 days, because a day is like a thousand years in the Bible says that, okay? So if you go to uh, page 36, this is mind boggling. Look at the eclipses and look at the time dates between them with May 26th, day 400 in the center. Doesn't that not blow your mind? That you can, oh, wow. that, so you have to think, you have to understand this was by design. God designed this. May 26, 2021, you go backwards and forwards 694 days and you get to two perfect eclipses. You go backwards and forwards 1,904 days, perfect eclipses. Like the whole thing is mathematically impossible. How does that happen, right? Wow. So that, that specifically delineated, that time point delineated between the old and the new era. 
So right now, today we're speaking on the 12th of July. We're in the new era, but again, we still don't see it. Mm -hmm. We still don't see this new era. What's happening? Well, think about this, right? 50-year jubilee takes us to the end of August. So we've basically got six weeks to go. Even though we're in the new era, spiritually, a new era can be, God can have spoken or something can happen spiritually, but we may not see it. Physically on this earth, when you've learned, listen to the prophets, you'll find that it takes time sometimes before it to fully manifest physically. So spiritual events and physical events, there's a delay. So right now, regardless, our world's spiritually in a new era, we just don't see it physically yet. However, the timeline calculation based on physical events, so that would equate to Nixon and dollar, physical events of 49 to 50 years ago say that this new era has to be visible physically before the end of August. Very interesting. Rather, it's interesting. It really is interesting because we so we know that we're stepping into a new era. The question is, is why don't we see it yet? Well, physically, we can look at the fact that, you know, we look at the Leviticus 25, 9, 10, and that 50-year cycle takes us to any time between now, the middle of July, because today is the 12th, into no further than the end of August, we're supposed to see this go down. And my cycle charts confirm all this. For cryptos and gold and silver. Yeah. Okay. So my cycles charts confirm this event is coming, and so now we're and there's a, there's a couple of key time points we have that I think this thing could, could 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 pop. But regardless, it doesn't matter this day or this hour here or there. All I'm saying is that within the next six weeks, we're supposed to you know we're supposed to physically see these events have gone down. So it's it's really crazy. Um, July 9th was 444 days, and what I got the other day. Trump is President 45, right? There's right. a reason for that because, so from 400 days, center of time, which was 400 days, uh, May 26, you do 45 days, that took us to this past Saturday that just passed. And you do four cycles of 45 days, and that's 180 degrees. Well, 180 degrees is what of 360, it's exactly half, right? Mm -hmm. It's ha it's an exact opposite direction. So that lands precisely three days before Thanksgiving. So the world, based on the cycle charts and the count, so based on Leviticus 25, 9, 10, says that uh, the dollar event that we're waiting for is supposed to happen anytime between now and the end of August, and sooner, I think, rather than later, okay? So that's what I can say about that. And then the world itself, you know, the new era is now, you know, in full year, the world is 180 degrees different by Thanksgiving, which, was, which would be in the 25th of November. That's where we're specifically... Uh, it, at right now is is a critical time point of, of turn so the, the the turn happened this past weekend so now yeah. we're just waiting at any moment in time for physical to manifest yeah hey, you, you know the good news bo for people that are watching this that have been kind of sitting on the sidelines and we've been telling them be prepared and be prepared you know, you can see the end of the track coming. Like you said, you're talking about a couple of hard dates there. People still have a little bit of time to get fortified. Those that have been complacent, kind of shame on you. But as you look at this, um, complacency is going to catch a bunch of people. And they won't be able to say we didn't know. Well, exactly. Like, how long have we been doing interviews together? Two, three years, right? Yeah. So we started, you know, about, at least it was two years minimum. And we, you know, Bitcoin is under $10,000, right? And so, oh my God, you know, Bitcoin's at 33000 Did you hear just Bitcoin's at 33000 or 32000 a coin when it was um, under under 10 when we were speaking. So it's it's still three to four times full from when we started talking about what was happening and it, are going to happen, right? And, you know, we've seen silver run down to under 15, you know, 15 bucks or, you know, last year. And now it's, you know, they're, they're fighting to keep it under 26. So 26 is that like line in the sand that they've been fighting forever to not let it pop through 26 and get into the 30s. So, you know, we're, we're at this point, but cryptos are front running the precious metals. That's the bottom line. But we have, again, hard numbers. And I can give you, you know, the, the 444 days, the 400 was a, would delineate the, the spiritual moment in time between old and new era. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the new era spiritually, but not physically. But based, like I said earlier, based on Nixon, right, where we, we need to see the cycle space is saying that, and it confirms within the crypto and the Bitcoin and the gold silver cycles that we're supposed to see this 
in the next six weeks. And I believe sooner, definitely, than the latter part of that. Okay. So it's, you know, we, August is going to be pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, I believe for, you know, what's, what's going, what's going down and what's happening. And, and so we're supposed to see the physical manifest of a massive uh, biblical changes based on a 2000 year prophecy that's written in revelation mm -hmm. of the third seal, the greatest financial event in human history. It's a, re it's a tipping of the financial scales. Um, you know, some some people hear, but they don't listen, right? And that's the problem. You know, you guys, you you hear and you listen. There's many people out there that hear and listen, but there's a lot of people who hear but do not listen. And that is why we need God to shake the heck out of some of these people. You know, um, there's been moments in time which I know we've talked about. You know, that happens to many people. That you know that you know they need to be knocked down. Mm -hmm. Many people who do God's work have been many and most the very powerful ones have been knocked down to their knees. And why does that have to happen? Because of man's pride. Okay, mm -hmm. man has pride, and heaven forbid, you know, <laughs> you know what they say: pride cometh before the fall. And so. There's such pride out there that God needs to knock a, a nation of people uh, to their knees. So America is about to fall. With this event, America falls. So expect that. Don't be, don't, don't be you know, shaken when this happens because America must fall. Many, many people will fall. But God's doing this out of love because he can't raise you if he hasn't knocked you down. Not everybody will choose to listen to what I'm saying, but just know that, you know, those that have been knocked down and then rise up, you know, you can't ever steer them in the wrong direction from the truth that they've come to realize. That God loves us and, you know, he has a plan bigger than any of us or either of us could ever comprehend, but he does nothing. Ever first before speaking through his prophets, you know, not that I'm a prophet, but I do get prophetic things. I believe in terms of chart, charts and patterns, and he shows that I get, I do get understanding of, of the patterns and how they work. And I'm, I'm telling you, we're we're at a critically important time point. Twenty, we're not going to get out of 2021 without us looking it com completely in the other direction. And I mean, like people falling you know, in terms of you know politicians, financial system, like everything is going to be 180 degrees different you know so as cold as last year was for us this winter is going to be cold like you've never seen for them yeah when god acts it's not like it you know he, he's going to be a moment in time where everything changes or like the, the triggering event and then everyone has to deal with what happened you know this is the year 2021 is i'm telling you this is 2021 is a year of the Lord's favor, but the day of his vengeance. When I say day, think about the Red Sea. It was 24 hours, and when God did what he did with Moses and in striking the water and the sea parting, right? 24 hours later, everything was 180 degrees mm -hmm. different. So go ahead. Well, you know what's so pernicious about it is, is because it's coming through the dollar, mm -hmm. It goes everywhere. And I mean, you know, we've been saying for, for a year now, you know, hey, it's coming. You know, you got to have some food. You got to have some water. You got to have some shelter. You got to have some bullets. You got to have some gold. You got to have some silver. You got to have some crypto. And, you know, you kind of spread yourself out and, and, you'll, and, you'll, and you'll go through it. Because when the dollar takes that hit, you know, suddenly now you have a home whose value is going to go down. Mm-hmm. Um, virtually every dollar denominated asset is going to go down and every non dollar dollar denominated asset is going to be going up. Mm -hmm. And, but then guess what? You know, they can't get blood out of a turnip. So what are they going to do? Try and come and foreclose your, on your home because they can't, you know, sell it to somebody else because they don't have any dollars. And, and literally those that, um, they got way out over their skis, highly leveraged, uh, the people that, that live and think their life is in this stupid phone 
and and just because they got some some app on there that says they're rich, think they're rich, you know, are going to have problems. Some good old country folks that hey, I own that ten acres out there, and I own this little bit of producing thing over here, and it's going to get down to the producers are going to be okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Because they got something that can produce, and the people that live off of uh, coffee, the New York Times, and and their speech, and Instagram and Twitter are going to be in a world of hurt. <laughs> is that is that safe to say, Bo? That in a sense, that's that's precisely it. You know, you look at a piece of paper that says you have a, a net worth of X, Y, or Z. You know, it's like you, you everything everything that people perceive as value, they perceive it on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you know, when the, when the financial system changes and the tipping of the scale occurs and then the things that are worth less, like silver, are going to be worth more. And then the opposite happens for the things that are paper based. So you're right. You know, so if you've got many people who don't want to listen, who've never wanted to prepare, uh, just think that everything's going to continue on the same path has been going on for how long already? It, just because their parents and their parents and their, you know, see, that's the problem, right? And so a lot of people who do know what's coming have parents that came from Europe, that came from third world countries, that woke up one day and their dollar was worth less, was worth 50 cents of what it was the day before. You see, so people that grew up in the United States have never seen that before. And and at some point, you know, it's just, you, can, you can't say never, because never, like, oh, that's never going to happen in the United States. Remember the one phrase, never is a very, very long time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, so. very interesting stuff, Bo, and I, I always love it, it, you know, especially for me personally, having you on has me kind of re-look at and, you know, pull out the good book and start brushing up on some things that, you know, very oftentimes we get busy, we get complacent and, you know, we're not as attentive as we need to be to things. And so you're always a little bit of a reset for me personally. I hope a lot of other folks out there, because it does make you go and say, okay, now hang on, you're charging ahead like this, but hold the phone there, big boy. It's not just my words, right? Please, there's other, there's people that are out there that are really good prophets, right? There is, oh, yeah. uh, you know, there is a handful of prophets that got together. I think is it, it was in the Grand Ole Opry, right? This is just in the Fourth of July. Go listen to what the prophetic word was, and how you know, you know, how you know is the truth is when, see, when the Holy Spirit speaks, it's the same message, but it goes to different people. So when you hear the same message from five or three or ten other people, you know it's coming from the same source. So, so that, that's where it's called discernment. So if ten people are saying something that you know, it feels nearly identical, you're discerning that those people are getting them information from the same source. But then one comes in and gives you some other information that doesn't rhyme, doesn't rhyme with the other ten you know that's not of God. So listen to what I've said. Think about it, right? Go listen to some prophets. Layer in what the other pro what prophets are saying, coupling it with the time analysis that I'm presenting to you, right? Does it rhyme? Does it rhyme with you? The point being is that, you know, I know you and Brent, you know, you get it, okay? But the mm -hmm. people that are listening, just does, does what I'm saying rhyme with what the prophets are saying? And I'll tell you, I uh, so, you know, from my website and people sending me emails, uh, the, my time analysis is rather uh, inc incredible. When mm -hmm. I compare it with like uh, one of the one I love listening to, Robin Bullock, like go go listen to some of his prophetic words, and you come to realize that my time analysis lines up with what's been spoken by him. It's incredibly wild, but the information comes from one source. You know, God speaks through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you know, talks to uh, talks to the prophets, and it's the same message spoken by different people, spoken a different way. But you know, through discernment, that it's the same message. Oh yeah, and you know, folks, it, it, um, we have the benefit of being subscribers with our association with you, and, mm -hmm. and from bringing you on and all that sort of stuff. So, I strongly recommend. You know, there's an event coming, like Bo said. You know, the 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 events a day. 
you know, the, the result is a year. And if there, and if there's ever a time you need to be listening to Bo and doing some of the self-reflection that, uh, you need to do just like do, uh, Drew and I do when we get to listen to him. You need to you need to check out his service. I think we've got a a, a promo code up there for you or whatever. Sure. Because you're going to need to be able to translate and and move from the assets you got to the assets that you need to have over that time period. You may not be totally set uh, on day one. I don't know anybody really could because with the dollar being the common thread. It, I think some of the effects are going to be regional. They're going to be local. You know, there are going to be some widespread effects that'll go everywhere, but you know, you're going to want to tweak things and, and keep up with all of this over the next year, especially uh, getting in prepared because, you know, biblically God uses prepared people. Uh -huh. And if you want to be used of God, you got to get prepared. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to be used of God, then just don't, you know, just be plummied up with the dummy like everybody else. And, and you can go with the wind and the, and, uh, and, you know, and suffer the consequences. So I strongly, I strongly recommend that. Are we going to have uh, uh, Bo's handout? Yes. Yeah. That, that'll be available, right? Your presentation. Yes. Yeah, so I, I emailed that presentation to Bobby over at your uh, at your office there. So just uh, in the interview itself, uh, in the lower portion of it, include the, this a PDF link, 60 something page PDF presentation covers everything that we've done, you know, that, you know, that's like our old stuff. And I included the new stuff of which the, the key thing I believe is a kind of synopsis page on page seven, the overall timeline <laughs> of where, where we're at. The math, again, is just, uh, it's astounding. Everything about him is perfection, right? So the, when I look at this, it's just incredible to see how these patterns are, are playing out. And so I'm just expecting something, you know, and I know from what we've talked about, you know, this is supposed to be an, an incredibly powerful year. Um, so we'll see what happens by year end, but, but my patterns, my cycle patterns for cryptocurrencies and gold and silver all point to a lot of excitement coming soon. Mm -hmm. Seriously, coming coming very very soon. I think you guys have seen that from, from oh, yeah. our you know from the work that I that provide. We're almost there uh, for incredibly you know fun things to start happening. And you're right, you know you know Solomon's mine, you know Solomon's temple, the, the wealth that Solomon had. Okay, so these spiritual people, you know, they prepared. Okay, so there's nothing. Everything of the Bible is prepare. God bless Solomon. There's many people in the the Bible that were blessed. Why? Because they prepared and they listened. Preparation is key. You know, in, in, events are going to happen whether you're ready or not. And mm -hmm. if you're prepared, well, I mean, life's going to be easier for you. And that's just, that's the bottom line on it um, versus not preparing, you know. And so everyone has free will. And that's what it's all about. You know, the reason we're in this mess is because of free will and Adam and Eve. Okay? <laughs> the double edged sword, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. This, everything I've done, the PDF presentation is free. I, I do for every, because I want to show people timelines where we're at. That's that's really the essence of what I've done. Then, yeah, I, I do, uh, you know, a cycle work, but that's different. That was, those people who are traders, who want, who are involved in mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies and want to get involved, if they do, then, yeah, you, we talked earlier in, our, it's the, in the bottom of the PDF presentation, there's information on that. You guys can cover that if you want. But that's for people who, you know, who want to trade and want more details in terms of more specifics in terms of timing. But the essence of our conversation, we cover today. Yeah. The other thing I'd tell you folks, and, and I appreciate uh, uh, Bo, who has a lot of humility, but he also kind of gives you in there, which we follow, certain picks that he believes are going to uh, do better than others in there. We subscribe to that as well. So it isn't just for traders, even hodlers. I mean, I, you know, everything that you have that you recommend, we go in and, and you know, we take a position in. So, and you've been, you've been on. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Most people don't realize if you've ever been the person that pulls the switch, yeah. you know, buy, sell, do now, whatever, whatever, you know, that, that's a hard, that's a hard seat to sit in. I remember I used to leave my fund and I'd, I'd leave it in certain positions and poor guy, I'd go elk hunting, which by the way, Bo, this, this end of August thing's killing me because I was thinking about an elk hunt, but um, <laughs> this guy, I'd be gone, I'd come back and oh my gosh, he'd had diarrhea and acne and he's in his, in his forties, you know, or fifties. So, um, but, you know, the interesting thing is, and, and uh, you know, cycles are one thing and, and, you know, trading cycles, but some of these biblical timelines are a whole different matter. And, and that, that money machine that we do that printing on on here, it can mess with cycles 
and everything. And it, uh, but it's not going to mess with timelines by a whole long. Mm-hmm. Period. No, and, and that's a good way of putting it because what you can see is the money printing can, can throw a cycle off temporarily. Okay, but there's a thing, in, in, uh, and actually you can read about it. It's like a W.D. Gann, one of the greatest cycle guys that have ever lived, right? He wrote a thing about it's called price meeting time. Yep. So what it is, it's so, so price is, say, if it's up here, and time is, it moves like this. So at some point, you can manipulate the price of something, hold it down for a long time. But at some point, the, the price is, the control is lost. And yeah. what you get is an exponential price explosion so that the price eventually will meet the time. So they touch. Mm-hmm. And so as much as they can manipulate and want to manipulate things, that's great. Sometimes it's, you know, depending on what chart you're looking at, it can be generations. But eventually, eventually, when price meets time, you want to be on the right side of that one. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Well, Bo, uh, thank you again for for coming on and gracing our audience with your information. It's always fascinating. I can't wait to print that out and start going into it some of my own homework. And uh, folks, pay attention out there. You can go, you can sign up and get more information from Bo. But it's it's always a joy and a pleasure to have you come on and share your wisdom with our folks. And you know, one thing we haven't said, Bo knows. Bo knows. Yeah. <laughs> Sharing this for you, baby. Right. <laughs> awesome, Bo. Say hi. I miss you guys. Actually, I, I do miss, I was just in Dallas this past weekend. So, you know, I didn't get a chance to go see you guys, but I, I had to go to Dallas this past weekend. But uh, yeah, I wasn't only not too far, maybe three, four hour trip for you guys. So I, I didn't see you, yeah. but I was in Dallas this past weekend. So but, what, yeah, what I do love like- Dallas. It's best smoke. Um, oh my gosh, the, the, the food is to die. Yeah. yeah. Hey, wasn't it pleasant? Cause the weather's been really nice. I mean, uh, it's a 95 and muggy, <laughs> but I, well, that is nice for Dallas, but I tell you what, down here, down South, we've been getting so much rain. It looks like Seattle around here, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. I've never seen it this green in July. That's true. That's beautiful. Yep. All right. Thank you both. Bo, thanks folks. God bless you, your show. families. Be well. Have a beautiful right. day. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks, you as well. Folks, Waldo's Crypto Show. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.